Hi Gamer here, and today's video is going to be a little bit different. I want to do an in-depth analysis of every single healing skill available to the warrior, including the ones available on the Berserker trait line and the Spellbreaker, and basically just find out which one, mathematically speaking, is the best. Now the reason why I say mathematically is because there's way too many variables in PvP and in terms of combat in the game. There's evades, there's blocks, there's blinds, there's outside buffs, outside healing, outside damage, different buffs, different condies. So basically it just jumps around all over the place. So I can't make this 100% accurate to find out which one's the best in which scenario. So basically the premise is you're going to be standing still, I'm going to be taking a constant amount of damage and just basically see in terms of numbers to see which one's the best. So with that said, let's begin. Now when I say different, I mean we're going to be dealing with an Excel format, a lot of math, a lot of numbers, and we're not even going to be playing the game. So that's what I mean when I say difference. So basically it's just an entire breakdown of every single skill I have to find, Sans, Healing Signet, all the way down to Natural Healing. We're going to go through every single one just to learn a little bit more about the skills, see how much they heal over time. And just, yeah, general breakdown. So let's start off with what actually defined stance is. Heals yourself, absor uh, absorbs all incoming strikes for a period of time. Its healing is 1,853 with a multiplier of 0.4. Now, for those of you that don't understand how healing works or how much you heal depending on your stats, the formula basically is actually right here. The formula is the initial healing you receive from the actual skill plus the multiplier, which is marked in gray, and then, a, and then an invisible stat, which is... Your, your healing power. So it's your initial healing plus the multiplier times the healing power, which we're going to get a little bit in more in depth once I actually open up some more tabs. But basically, 0.4 multiplier with a cooldown of 30 seconds. There's also, down here, I've gone ahead and placed all the traits that will affect said skill. So if you go into the defense trait line, the last stand actually increases the duration of your defined stance, which would increase it by a single second, and actually give you a vigor every time you pop it off for six seconds, which increases the endurance of by 50%. Now I'm not going to be including in, uh, the endurance for now, simply because I just want to have a baseline, an idea of how much this skill hit, uh, heals without any, putting any variance in it. So with that said, Let's move on to actually the meat of the information, which is right here. I have the graph just for visual perspective. So this is where all the information comes from. So this is the first skill I have to explain. The damage, I have more, I have three types of damage, high, medium, and low. High is 2,000, medium is 1,500, and low is 1,000. I'm basically just trying to get as much damage done to myself as possible and just to get myself a very, very rough idea. And of course, this isn't going to be normal in PvP, but you know, also I have every single amulet available that actually includes healing power. Cur currently I'm running the Marshal, which gives me 1050 healing power, and actually you can actually run off with Mender, which gives me more health, but I'm just going to stick with Marshal just to keep the numbers simple. So the thing is, with Excel, I actually don't know the formula to be able to input into the healing column in order for it to automatically populate of when to pop it off, including... In I just don't know a formula smart enough that would consider the cooldown, the multiplier, the healing, especially when to pop it off. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that manually. So we're going to start off here. Basically, without any healing, we'd be dead within basically, let's just say, 9 to 10 seconds. So we're going to pop off a heal as soon as the 9 second mark hits. We're going to be healing for the initial... Actually, I'll just show you the formula. We're going to be healing for the initial times plus the multiplier times the healing power, which gives us a total of 2,273 healing. Now the thing is, with four seconds of defined stance, we're going to just go ahead and say all the four seconds that as soon as we pop it off, we get hits. So I'm going to go ahead and just add that back into the healing. So it's saying for the initial four seconds, we're going to get healed for the exact amount of damage that we've been being, being dealt with the entire time. And all of a sudden we skyrockets to 18 seconds of survivability. Basically we die on the 19th second. So that's without the initial trait line. Now let's say we actually do go ahead and trade it and we're going to be able to heal an extra second. All of a sudden that extra second of damage input keeps us alive for 21 seconds. The healing signet, my personal favorite healing skill in the game. It's a little bit interesting because it has an active heal and as well as a pass passive heal and it actually does have a trait. So in the arms section, it's called the Signet Mastery. For every single sigil that you own, it basically just recharges, uh, reduces the recharge of that sigil by 20%. So it goes from 20 seconds to a 16 second cooldown if you decide to actually activate it and all that. But let's get to that and do the data. 
I'm gonna stay on high and Marshall for across all the skills just to keep it coherent. Now initially, I would actually go ahead and die, of course, at the 10th second without any healing skill. So that active skill, uh, active healing goes off. I go ahead and actually stay alive for an extra second. Not too bad. However, if I go ahead and actually activate it at the last second, I'm gonna gain an extra 200, uh, 2,800 health. And look at that. I stay alive until until second number 14, and with 22 health to spare. To the limit, the single highest healing skill the warrior has. I and mean, look at that, 9,000 health as soon as you pop it off. And also, you can actually increase its healing in the tactics section. I think that's a tactics section. I've actually never used that the trait, so I have no idea. It's called Vigor Shouts, and it gives you 1,000 healing with a multiplier of 1.2. It actually also reduces the recharge by 20%. So let's see what it does. 30 seconds to 24 seconds with an extra 1,000 health with, of course, the multitude of 1.2. Let's see what that looks like. So of course, I'm gonna go ahead and die at the 10th second. I go ahead and pop it off at the 9th second. And look at that, it actually keeps me alive to the 16th. Now, however, this formula actually includes the traded line. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of it and see how much, okay, so I just live an extra second, uh, an extra second compared to when it's not traded. Mending is actually very fairly simple, 15 second cooldown, 6,000 health initially with a single multiplier, there's no trace that could possibly add to it, and all it does is just simply remove Condi. So go ahead, put it in a formula, and bam, I'm already dead at 14 seconds. Blood Reckoning. Now the thing that makes this thing a viable healing option is that damage to healing is 25%, but since I'm not doing any damage, just by itself, if you're stunned and all of a sudden you try to pop this up or you pop this up and all of a sudden you get stunned, the initial healing is going to be 3,000, which just keeps you alive for an extra, look at that, basically two seconds. So when I said to the limit was the single highest healing skill the warrior had, apparently I lied because the he uh, natural healing actually increases it by 11,000 HP. Now that's a lot. Now the thing is, I never use this skill because... I mean, all it does is removes your boons and removes Condi. So if you're having heavy Condi pressure, that could be a viable skill. But in terms of data, eh, 16 seconds for 11,000 with a 25 second cooldown, I'll be dead long before it comes off a cooldown. So as a baseline without any variables whatsoever, the Defiant Stance is the clear winner. Keeps me alive for 21 seconds, simply because the damage I'm being taken all of a sudden turns into healing, and I'm just skyrocket, my health just goes up and there you go. So with that said, now I actually want to put in some variables. As a warrior, I have some available to me. I can evade and I can block. And those are the two ones I mainly want to include. I'm not going to include evades from great swords. I'm simply going to include evades from endurance and blocks from shields, which is three seconds sh blocking for 20 seconds cooldown. So with that said, I'm going to go back and see what happens. So before I show the final conclusion with every single variable uh, included in the healing skills, I want to explain how I actually got it. So marked in blue are blocks. I'm going to be blocking for three ticks for every 20 ticks, starting as soon as I stop. So for instance, I was blocking for tick 10, tick 11, tick 12, meaning I'll be able to block again for three ticks at 33. And evades, imagine evades have a have a counter, or not a counter, just like a ammo count of 100. You need 50 to activate it, and refresh is five per tick. So I went ahead and evaded at, for instance, a five here. I'm going to do that to actually keep it constant, I'm gonna evade at five throughout every single skill, and then from there, pick and choose where I should evade, just to have a little bit of input, I don't know, human input, rather than just having the data form. So as you can see, uh, with Divine Stance, it kept me alive for 27 seconds with all the blocks, all the evades, and including the heals, and I'm also be going ahead and choosing the most efficient healing methods. For instance, I want it to have traded if it go ahead, if it goes ahead and works. Now, regarding Vigor, I'm not gonna count buffs. For instance, let's just say, as soon as it went off and I got Vigor, I all of a sudden I just got de-booned by a Necro, another warrior, and that Vigor is no longer there. I just want the healing. I don't really want any any other variables. Just I just want like a base baseline. So with that said, let's actually check out the conclusion. Well, these are my results. Surprisingly, Defined Stance actually comes out on top again, and Healing Signet actually doesn't do as well as I thought. And as you can see right here, here are the graphs. Let me actually zoom out just a bit just to have everything in all in one show. So we got Divine Stance, Healing Signets, yada yada yada. So these are the graphs, and you can kind of see where the healing, the healing comes in useful. You can see I skyrocket in health with the Divine Stance, so as long as, I'm keep get, as long as I keep getting hit, and the harder I get hit, the more health I'm going to be able to skyrocket, and it might actually take me all the way up to the top. But with a, what I believe is, it's, it's a 30 second cooldown, you got to really think about that. And then the Healing Signet is a constant heal, but as you can see, just kind of keeps me alive in bits and pieces here and there with the blocks and the evades you can sort of see my health 
going up once in a while. So if you're running away or if you're baiting a lot, yeah, yeah, you could get a little bit higher up. And once I pop it off, it gives me a decent amount of heal, but then it almost instantaneously just drops off once the damage comes back in. To the limit, keeps me it keeps me alive for a while, especially if I block right after and do a little bit of evade there. It keeps me alive for a little bit longer. But with a uh, 24 second cooldown, is yeah, it does you don't really have much healing unless you're doing adrenal health. So after that, you're just basically bait. Uh, mending, we got a nice, about similar to, to the limits, except mending has a uh, lower cooldown, so you could pop it off if you live long enough, but unfortunately, with constant damage, you're not going to be able to do that. Blood Reckoning, eh, the healing depends mostly on all the damage you're doing, so I can't really say how sure I am Blood Reckoning is useful, so if you're if you're doing a lot of damage, this obviously is going to go much higher, and a little bit across the board, because you're going to be doing damage as you heal, so... Just like this is really technically undefined so blood reckoning uh, needs a little bit more research and then natural healing a giant jump in health but as soon as that happens bam nothing really to show for it so here's the thing i want to share this file with others because i'll put in work in it and i want others to add to it change it maybe i did something wrong maybe i wasn't maybe there's a formula in here that could be added or etc etc actually while i'm here i want to show off what i actually put in so the evades the heals, the blocks, to make sure everything's in order, everything's okay here. But yeah, I was just inputting evades uh, constantly at the 5, and then just sort of choosing where I think would be most effective and evade right after a block, make sure that happened. That wasn't really useful. There's the mending, 15 second cooldown. I would have been at 22, but unfortunately, I didn't quite make it there. But if I did, I would have had another heal, and actually would have been the first skill to uh, have a second heal to be able to pop off blood reckoning like I said 25 sec uh, 25 percentage to damage to healing so I can't really say this is accurate because I don't know how much damage I'm doing and not all it depends so blood reckoning could be useful could be not and then natural healing last but not least well possibly least well definitely not least with that with that healing uh, the evades the heals the blocks jumps jumps up to help but with a 25 second cooldown I'm not gonna be able to activate it for quite some time like uh, 34 and I'm nowhere close to that so in conclusion defined stance is the most useful but you gotta be getting hits at the moment you activate it it's just like a rep but if you're not getting hit if if you're not in a group of crowd of people if you're 1v1ing and they notice that the healing is gonna stop you're gonna get the initial heal and that's about it and you're just gonna blow it off so uh, actually actually was as I was saying I want to share this file but here's the thing I don't know how so please if you actually do want to play around with this file yourself if you have Excel if you want to play around with it uh, let me know how I can share this file. I can go ahead and just send you an email with the file attached, but I don't know if, depending on how many people want it. Basically, I just want to share it. I want an easy way to do it, like Google Drive, but I'm not sure how to do it. So leave in the comments if you know of a way. Let me know, because I do want to share it. And with that said, Defiant Stance, um, I'm actually going to make a build with Defiant Stance. Stance, it might be effective.